Well, and it goes without saying that I'm not going to make a video about U.S. Uh, veterans and uh, sacrifices um, in terms of uh, war making here without mentioning what has been happening in Iraq and to the Iraqi people since this illegal war has begun. This was now almost six years ago and um, even under Saddam Hussein's dictatorship things were not as bad in Iraq as they are now. Essentially um, Iraq as a country has been reduced to rubble and in human terms because not even rudimentary um, things that that any one of us takes for granted it, and which was functioning there in Iraq before uh, the United States uh, invaded that country. Um, even rudimentary things such as clean water um, access to food, uh, not to mention safety on the streets, which is, you know, that's an oxymoron at this point. But just even rudimentary things just to survive um, in any large city in Iraq has become virtually impossible. There are at least 600,000 refugees which have fled Iraq uh, if they had the means to do so. Others remain uh, unsafe within the country, refugees within their own provinces and so on. And, um, you know, we have essentially brought about a civil war uh, which anyone could have predicted uh, beforehand. And actually we did predict it. So this has come to pass now. And uh, things basically couldn't be worse. And the um, international um, response to all of this is to somehow still back the United States government uh, in terms of official diplomatic efforts. But uh, in reality, many nations are going against this and you know, they realize that this is a done deal and that nothing will come out of it despite the rhetoric concerning um, um, Iran and the next war. It won't do anyone any good, it won't do humans any good, and it won't do anyone's economy any good at this point. So let us hope that uh, cooler heads prevail, that uh, ordinary citizens have some say so in this and that their governments, if they are still supporting uh, the imperialist <laughs> um, ventures of the United States will come to terms with the fact that uh, it's probably counterproductive in the long run um, since we're all facing much larger problems uh, at this point. We're talking about um, the, the deterioration of the entire environment, the global environment, uh, uh, global climate change and so on, which uh, is not uh, a nationalistic problem. Uh, it's, um, it goes way beyond politics and if we want to solve the upcoming huge problems for the next generations on this planet, then uh, probably we shouldn't be uh, paying too much attention to the project for the new American century as it is still being put out there uh, by uh, some of the um, administration officials here in the U.S. and I might also say in, uh, in Great Britain and uh, also in, in, in Germany, I might say, which is quite surprising since um, They've actually made some headway in some directions. Um, people should pay attention to uh, global problems because it's not going to be solved through <laughs> patriotism, uh, nationalistic standpoints, uh, or anything like that. And uh, the Iraqis have paid a very high price 
for these adventures and they have been set back basically uh, in terms of history in terms of living standards basically about a hundred and fifty a hundred and a hundred and seventy years or so so keep that in mind and um, and don't pay too much attention to religious nationalist uh, rhetoric from any side whatsoever you know I think uh, humans are basically pretty decent they want to do the right thing but then they're always uh, encouraged by their governments or their leaders whoever they may be to act to the contrary and basically against their own interest so you know let's not make the same mistake again <laughs>